Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I want to talk about an intermediate photography technique called focus stacking. Uh, what it is, uh, how it could be beneficial for you guys to know it, and um, how it can help with your food photography. So uh, stick around uh, and we'll jump right into that after the intro. <music> Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so good to see you again. My name is Chris and here we talk about food photography. If that's something you're interested in, I'd urge you to subscribe and follow along for more videos. Uh, today we're talking about focus stacking and what focus stacking uh, is, it is a, a taking a series of images and stacking them one on top of, the, of each other digitally, uh, creating a larger depth of field for your image. So to understand the benefits of focus stacking, what you have to know first is what is depth of field. And depth of field, another way to say depth of field is the amount of focus that is in your image. So depth of field is controlled by three factors. Uh, the first being the focal length of your lens. Um, generally, uh, uh, shorter lenses have a, a greater depth of field than longer lenses do. For example, a 20 millimeter at the same aperture as a 105 millimeter lens. Um, will have a lot more depth of field, a lot more of the area of the image in focus. Um, that is factor number one. So the second factor is the distance you are from your subject. The closer you are to your subject, then the, the uh, uh, more shallow the depth of field becomes. The third factor is the aperture setting. Um, the more wide open your camera is, uh, the more shallow the depth of field is going to be. For example, this photo here has a very shallow depth of field. Notice the thin band of the area that is in focus or not blurry. So the aperture refers to the opening of the lens's diaphragm, um, which lets the light in. It's calibrated in f-stops, and it's generally written as a number such as 1.4, 2.8, or 5.6, and there are numbers in between there as well. Um, every lens uh, is calibrated with an aperture, a minimum aperture. Uh, for example, the lens I'm using right now is a 20, mil 20 millimeter 1.8. Um, so that is uh, how it is calibrated for the light that passes through when it is set to a 1.8 opening. Now, when people talk about closing a lens down, what they're saying is you raise the aperture. So this lens can go all the way down to f22, I think. Um, and what that does is it closes the aperture down and lets in a lot less light. As you go up in um, your aperture and you close it down, therefore letting in less light, the depth of field begins to grow and more of your image becomes in focus. The trade-off is you start losing a lot of light. Um, and that's where focus stacking helps is because if you don't want to give up the light that you have, then keeping wide open and taking several images to stack can make your image, you know, usable. So why would you need to focus stack? Um, there are a few scenarios where focus stacking will help you get a, a good quality image. You know, if you don't have, like we said earlier, if you don't have enough light to stop down, you need to get that photo in the light that you have, and you can't adjust that light at all. So you need to keep the, the aperture wide open to get as much light in there as possible. What that does is creates a very shallow depth of field, which, you know, can make an image, you know, too blurry all the way through. So focus stacking will allow you to take several images, stack them and get more of that image in focus. If you're very close to a small subject, for example, macro photography, um, if you've ever seen the, the, the photos of the little bugs and you know um, things like that, those are focus stacked images. And the only way to get those um, those little bugs, you know, in focus from front to back because of the of the of how close you are to the lens and the subject, you need to focus stack for those. And you also need to focus stack in other scenarios such as landscapes and building interiors, but we won't cover those here. So what do you need for focus stacking? Uh, number one is you need to be on a tripod or have the camera set somewhere so that it's not going to move. And a tripod is the best way to do that. You need to keep the camera still so each frame is identical to the last frame except for the focus point uh, so that when you, when you layer them in your software, uh, it is much easier for the computer to match everything up. So next you need a camera with a focus stacking or a focus bracketing uh, option. Um, and most of the, the uh, camera brands now include some form of uh, focus stacking or focus bracketing. Um, the Nikon that I'm using has a, a focus stacking option that we will use uh, in a little bit when I show you how to do actual focus stacking. 
Um, you also need a lens, a compatible lens. In some cameras where uh, they have a focus stack, stacking option, if you use a third party lens, it won't always work with those lenses. So you wanna make sure you have a lens that is either native to your camera, camera system or it is uh, uh, compatible with the focus stacking options that you may have. So if you have an older camera that doesn't have the options of either focus stacking or focus bracketing, uh, what you'll need to use is a camera focus rail. This rail sits in between your tripod and your camera and allows you to manually slide your camera to different focal points with micro adjustments. You can find them on Amazon for as little as $30. Lastly, you'll need the software uh, to be able to merge these images in. Um, Helicon is one software. You can use Capture One or Adobe Photoshop. Um, and there are some camera brands that will actually do the stacking for you uh, in camera. So it will take a series of photos for you, adjust the focus, put those images all together as one and export that as a single file. All right, so let's get into creating a photo now using focus stacking. Uh, we're gonna take a photo that I'm gonna use as the thumbnail for this video and show you how I do that with the focus stacking option on the Nikon camera. Um, after that, we will go into Lightroom and Photoshop. We'll do a quick edit on the photo. Uh, we'll merge that in Lightroom and you'll be able to see the difference between what one frame looks like just as a single, uh, a single focus point versus the photo merge that we do where um, we have created a focus stacked image um, with much more of the subject in focus. All right, so we're all set up to get ready for the photo now. I've got my camera set up with the uh, 105 millimeter 2.8 lens, the, the macro, my favorite food lens of all time, the 105. If you notice, there's not a whole lot of stuff here. It's just gonna basically be this small little plate, the napkin, the surface, the blueberries, and I've got a little bit of mint here, so we've got some color for a garnish. Um, I've got a little bit of a water and glycerin mix so that we can make sure that there's a nice little um, kind of water sheen on those and my my tweezers for adjusting, uh, making sure I get the perfect blueberry where I want it to be right in the center of the frame. And that blueberry is what we're gonna focus stack and, and I'll show you that example in a minute. So here is the scene now as it is uh, in the uh, Nikon Z6 with the macro lens. This is what I'm looking at on the back of the camera. You can see from a focal standpoint, and this is how I'm going to explain the focus stacking. You can see right now because I'm cl so close, I'm using a, a, a 105 millimeter, which is a longer lens. Um, I'm at 3.3 on my aperture. Um, you can see how shallow that depth of field is. There's just this tiny little bit on the very bottom of the photo that is in focus. Now, if we if we move up a little bit, you can see more of it comes into focus as we go along. And that's what focus stacking basically is. And we're gonna take several images to be able to get more of this scene in focus because I don't wanna have that big fat blueberry, that beautiful blueberry right in the front I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be blurry on on the, on the front or the back. I want that blueberry to be uh, focused all the way through. So now I'm in the back of my camera. I'm going to go to menu, the photo menu. And there it is. Focus shift shooting. I'm going to be able to pick the shots that I want, and I think based on the fact that I've got a small scene, I can get away with probably I'm going to be conservative and do more than I need at 15 shots, so 15 shots. I'm going to make it because it's so narrow. I'm going to do narrow shots as well. I'm not going to waste any time in between. First frame exposure lock is on. Peaking stack image off solid photography, and I will turn this on. And what this will do is keep the shutter from moving back and forth. I press start. And it is now taking 15 images where it's shifting the focus. So we can go back now and take a look at what it did. 
and you probably can't see this on, on the screen, but we're good. So now we're in Lightroom. We've got the full series of photos here uh, that we took uh, with the with the focus stack. Uh, I've got this one starred down here as it is the first in the series that we took here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a photo in the middle. Let's go to 13. That has a little bit of focus right on that blueberry. So I know it's, there's some sharpness there. We are going to edit this one. And before we go anywhere further, this is going to be a thumbnail for uh, this video, which means that YouTube wants me to have it in a, in a 16 by nine format. So we will do that first. Uh, I think I like it right about there. Right about there. And now we can edit this photo. Bring the contrast up a little bit. I'm sorry, the exposure. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're only gonna work with color and light. We don't wanna touch any of the contrast or sharpening, any of those things that edit the um, the look of the photo other than the color and the light, because those are things that you can blend easily. Once you start sharpening, things become a little bit more complicated. So for right now, we're gonna leave contrast alone, sharpening alone, um, and just worry about the color and the exposure itself. Now, uh, let me apologize ahead of time in case my computer sounds like it is uh, on a mission to fly somewhere else. Um, it's an older machine and sometimes you know, the computing power on the Lightroom when you're getting into these photos, it can, it can get loud. So if it does get loud, I apologize. Um, but we may be stuck with it. So, all right, let's get... I want this to be nice and poppy. So we're gonna go a little bit heavier on the color. Blueberries, we're gonna up the blue, up the purple, and a little bit of green. Although that leaf has quite a bit of green in it, so. And that is really all we're gonna do right now for this. So we're going to now apply these settings across all these photos at the same time. So we're gonna go copy settings. Copy. Develop settings. Paste settings, and there we go. I'm gonna right click and we're going to edit in Photoshop, but it's important that we do open as layers in Photoshop. This will take another minute or so until all the photos are loaded because it is, you know, a lot of data for Photoshop to import. All right, now all the photos are loaded into Photoshop. And what we're going to do is highlight each layer. We're going to go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. Now Photoshop's gonna work on that as well and it'll take a little bit of time. And it's gonna align the layers so that when we make our changes, um, they're all even. Now, when you change the focus, sometimes you'll get a little bit of distortion um, in your camera uh, and, and there'll be a little bit of sometimes um, um, zooming a little bit as you uh, uh, go through and focus. Now, it, it's, it's minute on on a scene like this, if you're in a much larger scene, sometimes you'll have um, a lot more issues there as far as as far as zooming when you focus between one and the other, um, which is basically is called focus breathing. 
All right, now that the merge is all done, you can see we've got this little bit of vignette here that didn't match up. So we will deal with that later. But for now, we're gonna go into edit. Now that everything's still highlighted over here, we're going to go into auto blend layers, stack images. All right, so after several minutes in some serious computing power, uh, you can see the final result here of all these images stacked on top of each other. The focus starts here. This is where we started our, our series and it goes all the way back through here, right to the edge of this leaf. Now, what I would like to have done, unfortunately, is probably done another five to eight photos on the back end to get more of this blueberry in focus, but I, I can't complain. I, I do like the way it looks. So um, you'll also notice that those two check boxes that we, that we checked with the content aware fill up here, I've filled in those all those white spots that came from auto aligning the uh, the images. So you do want to make sure you have those two boxes checked when you are doing your stack. Uh, and that is our image. So we've saved it, and now you can see it if we go back to Lightroom. Here it is. And if we go to say a photo in the middle, you can see the difference between this is just one image where just this tiny fraction here is in focus, right? But after the stack, this is the new version of everything in focus. So that's what focus stacking can do for you. And that's why it is such a, a handy tool when you're doing small intimate scenes like this. Um, you're using a macro lens or a, 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 a tighter lens or you're very close to your subject. Um, I think that looks great and I'm very happy with it. So, so we'll take that photo now, we're gonna export it and that will be the thumbnail for this video. Uh, you'll notice I did leave some room on the left side of the photo so that I could put in um, a little bit of uh, text graphic uh, for the image. Um, but other than that, you know, that is focus stacking in a nutshell. Um, I was very happy with the way that came out. I think it looks great. And uh, like I said, I wish I'd done all, you know, another five to six frames on the back end, but I mean, for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that the way it is. If, uh, if you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button on your way out. Um, if you are not a subscriber um, and this kind of uh, photography, food photography interests you, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you, you know, hit subscribe and follow along and, you know, post, uh, you know, Post in the comments what else you'd like to see. Other than that, uh, I will bid you guys a good week um, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks and bye for now.